Well, let's turn then to the second lesson of Unit 1, which addresses the question, what ideas about civic life informed the Founders' generation? Let's start with the Greeks and Romans. How, how did Greek and Roman thought influence at least some of the founders? Well, as we talked about a little bit earlier, at least some of the colonists had studied writers such as Plato and Aristotle and Cicero. Plato and Aristotle focused on the importance of good political associations. They assumed that they were natural, but they also knew that no matter what form a political association takes, it can degenerate into what is bad. Um, Aristotle, who loved to classify things, I think Aristotle could classify anything. Aristotle showed us that there are various ways to rule. You can be ruled by a one, by the few, or by the many, and that there's a right form and a wrong form, or a good form and a bad form, of each of those. So the right form of rule by one is monarchy, the wrong form is tyranny, the right form of rule by a few is aristocracy, rule by the few good, but the corrupt form is oligarchy, rule by the few wealthy. With respect to rule by the many, there's the polity, which he talked about as the mixed constitution, and that reflected all three social classes that were recognized in ancient thought We've rejected that notion of fixed social classes uh, with our concepts of popular sovereignty, but we'll get there later. But there's a corrupt form of rule by the many. He called it rule by the many poor or democracy. Plato and Aristotle devoted their writings on politics to what makes a form of government good. As I've said, thinkers in the classical Republican tradition contended that human beings are by nature political or polis animals and that they're interdependent. Each one of us has a skill that others don't have. We need one another. Humans also have a capacity that no other animal has to speak and to reason. But there's no guarantee that they will develop that capacity any more there's a guarantee that an acorn will become an oak tree. The human, like the acorn, has to be nurtured and tended to properly if it's going to achieve its unique excellence. Classical Republicans believe that these unique human capacities are best nurtured in small homogeneous communities in which order, discipline, and public spiritedness prevail. To them, a good education for the youth was as important as good defenses for the community. People needed to have an opportunity, as well as a responsibility, to develop good habits, including moderation, frugality, and courage. A central challenge addressed by classical Republican thinkers was how to find rulers who have sufficient knowledge and wisdom to know how to govern well without being corrupted by a love of power. Now, Plato's idealistic solution was a philosopher king, a person who loved wisdom more than power. Only a philosopher king, he argued, could govern solely with the interest of the governed in mind. Aristotle certainly understood that philosophers would never become kings, but he did believe that was realistic for rulers to be statesmen. Statesmen are persons of extraordinary character who love community more than themselves, who have studied the art of ruling, who understand what is best for people in a given situation and how best to accomplish it. Many of the colonists had studied classical Republican philosophy. They knew the importance of citizens being well-informed and devoted to the common good and willing to make sacrifices for the sake of the community. We described those qualities as civic virtue. Certainly the colonies could not have survived without least some semblance of that spirit of classical Republicanism. Roman writers like Cicero were also very influential to the founding generation. He again emphasized morality, the importance of duty, of making sacrifices for the common good, whether that be uh, in military service or in public service. Uh, Cicero was so highly regarded in the colonies that only the Bible was read more frequently 
than Cicero's treatises and uh, speeches. Huge impact on our thinking. Another good read, if I can do a commercial um, stop here, Carl Richard's book, Greeks and Romans Bearing Gifts, a wonderfully readable overview of the contribution that the Greeks and Romans made to uh, the colonial thinkers. We see these classical virtues today. We see people making sacrifices for their communities at a local level. Everything from volunteerism to coaching and tutoring kids to serving on boards and commissions for which you receive no pay, getting involved in neighborhood associations, taking seriously the civic responsibilities that we have, performing, for example, jury duty, voting intelligently, really studying and becoming informed before we vote, the importance of maintaining civil discourse in our public bodies and in our discourse with one another. And what's ironic to me is we lament the lack of those classical virtues when we are saddened by the lack of civil discourse, by courteous behavior. We worry about kids who are isolated because we know that isolation can lead to very antisocial behaviors, that we have a duty to help include people in our communities. So in that sense, those classical ideas remain very present even though we may not be as conscious of them as uh, previous generations were.